Hello and welcome to the Second Drafts podcast, everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. I'm Jeremy. I'm EJ. And today on Second Drafts, we'll be talking about writing what you don't know. So uh, as I'm sure everyone has heard, the original saying is write what you know. Uh, but sometimes it does get a little mixed up there uh, because it means something different than what uh, most times it's used for, uh, thought to be used for. Hmm. So most people uh, think that it means to write about a particular topic or uh, subject that you're familiar with. So if you're a doctor, say, writing about uh, being a doctor or uh, your character is a surgeon, you know, whether it's fiction or not. But in actuality, what it uh, originally uh, means is emotional knowledge. Oh. So taking your own feelings and uh, using that to influence your characters and help bring uh, some authenticity to their actions or the dialogue and uh, the things that happen in between. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, I, I mean, some for some people it, it will work well to write about the the literal physical things that they know. I mean, Kathy Reichs wrote wrote a lot of uh, books, police procedural kind of things. I think it's her books that the Bones series is based on. Okay. And I mean, that of course served her very well, yeah. uh, having that background and being able to write a ton of books on that. So sometimes it works. But other times, I mean, if uh, some of the things that Stephen King wrote about, for instance, were had to be things that he actually knew about, <laughs> then I think someone should get the guy an exorcist pronto. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. He has a deep fear of clowns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and now, thanks to him, we all do. So <laughs> that's <laughs> something that happened. Um, but, yeah, like, I mean, you write kind of fantasy-ish books. I prefer fantasy and sci-fi, so I mean, we would, mm -hmm. of course, have a bit of a problem writing things that are literal uh, that we know about. So it's 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 more about the common experience to all stories, and that's just the human element in it. The emotional part of it, I think. Yeah, I don't think that I could write uh, anything contemporary, because being a Canadian... It's a little boring up here. It's <laughs> you could write about the cold and about the bears. It'd be <laughs> yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Not too much exciting happens up here, unfortunately. Okay. Well, uh, where I live, unless you're planning to write political fetuses, then I suppose not a lot of exciting happens down here either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So definitely, like, if we were to take that original, uh, the, what people think it means, then we wouldn't be writing uh, historical fiction and uh, fantasy, for sure. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so, it, it can definitely help out uh, taking it in the actual original meaning, uh, trying to get that emotional depth, because mm. uh, for sure we've, you know, had certain experiences like, you know, love and and uh, losing love and that sort of thing. And so bringing that into your characters would be able to help out, uh, especially when, uh, as I'm sure that it happens, uh, even on a subconscious level, you kind of model characters after yourself a little bit. Mm. So bringing that emotional uh, knowledge kind of in there can definitely help out. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you have to work with something <laughs> when you write. Uh, no writer lives in a vacuum. Yeah. And um, so I think, yeah, it's quite useful to be able to take some of your own feelings. And I think the most difficult part is getting coming to the realization that what you're feeling is not unique necessarily. It, it, this links a bit back into our previous post where we spoke about originality. But yeah. often we kind of, we're trapped in our own minds and we... We, we think that it's these unique feelings that we've got. But meanwhile, it's it's usually very typical of the, the human experience, and other people will get it. All you need to do is, you know, write a story that contains those elements, 
And you can tweak them a bit, of course. You're a writer, mm -hmm. you've got imagination, you change things, you make this bigger and that smaller and everything. But in the end, yeah, I think other people will, will, will definitely get you as long yeah. as you make sure to, to, to write authentically. Yeah, it definitely, uh, as you said there, can bring some authenticity to the emotions that you're uh, bringing to the characters. But uh, on my side of things, I think that it's definitely the write what you know, the original there. Uh, it's good advice, but I don't feel that it's great advice. Because in some cases, you won't be able to draw uh, much from. Like if you haven't really suffered loss, uh, you can't really bring that to the table, at least uh, in terms of what it's talking about. If you haven't had a child, uh, you know, there's always the people who say, like, you know, if you don't have a child, you, you just don't know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think <laughs> some changes in life happen and it's it's such a big change that you just cannot imagine it without <laughs> actually having gone through it. And, yeah. yeah. And same thing, say, with uh, addiction. Like, uh, if you yeah. haven't been addicted to something in that same way, then there's not really much that you can draw from if you're uh, if you're writing a character who is addicted to something and trying to struggle with that addiction. Yeah, it's it's. I think there are probably categories of these things. I mean, with addiction. I'm not sure how you would go about emulating that from from experiences that you've already had. If if, but um, don't do drugs. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Um, don't actually go out and research has its limits, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're definitely not saying that. So <laughs> we'll get that right out of the way. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the advice definitely has a bit of a limitation, I think, depending on how one takes it. Um, one danger is that new writers will feel like this is this is a, a you know solid rule that requires them to write only exactly about those real life things that they already know, and that if their work doesn't ring with this perfect authenticity, um, it's going to be complete garbage. And I think that's that's a bit of a, a, a danger. That's the point where the rule becomes a bit less helpful. And maybe more damaging uh, if if you're not careful how you take it, <laughs> because this yeah. this could actually da uh, paralyze a writer um, who would otherwise have written pretty decent or even good uh, stories. They might end up being paralyzed and thinking, "Oh, but this isn't good enough. This isn't authentic. This I don't know anything about, you know, mating customs on <laughs> this, <in> this <laughs> island." <laughs> Where meanwhile, you know, just relax a bit, <laughs> take it easy. It's you know. Yeah, and like uh, just what you're saying, it, it can definitely sometimes paralyze people uh, to writing something new and original. Like, uh, say, even from the female experience, trying to write female characters, uh, or even having a main character being uh, female. Uh, yeah. If you're a, a male, then. Like you might be apprehensive about doing that because uh, sometimes it might not ring true, and that's why, like on my end of things, I like to say, uh, write what you don't know, because it's going to force you to think outside the box and work harder to try and make mm. something genuine. Um, as far as uh, again what we were saying, you know, we're not advocating going out and doing drugs, <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, Maybe try and look online for interviews uh, with people who struggle with addiction and what they had to go through and uh, mm -hmm. talk with people about their experiences, if possible, and try and get their viewpoint. And uh, same thing kind of with uh, writing female characters. Like look at uh, other uh, female characters that uh, are written by uh, female authors. And they might be able to kind of help you ring true with uh, some of those different emotions that uh, us, um, you know, stone-faced men might not <laughs> be able to otherwise write yeah. about. So no, I, Definitely in, in this case, I think what you have to remember is interview, uh, interviewing people uh, with that, you know, in, in the one case you could, you could actually interview uh, addicts or ex-addicts, it might help. 
to 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 kind of get behind it and understand a little bit about it of course you I mean you're not going to uh, live the life of that but it's I think that can really help and to help with that is is empathy it comes down to empathy which mm -hmm. is um which will help you a lot um it is important for an author to have empathy and I think we can all agree on that mm -hmm. um and for those of you wondering what we're talking about <laughs> it's uh Empathy is just the ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes. Um, I actually think we all know what that is. Uh, I think some empathy comes naturally. Some people have more natural empathy than others. Um, while you've made the distinction now between you know men writing women and women writing men, I, I think the common perception is that women tend to have more empathy than men. I, I don't know how much of that is true. But I think that's what most people believe. Mm. Um, but I definitely think that's the natural empathy side of it. There's also a learned empathy uh, aspect to it. You can definitely exercise this and, and, and learn to be more empathetic with you know with other people. Um, yeah, like uh, mm -hmm. I can't recall exactly where it was, but I I know I've read before that uh, we always will empathize more with uh things that we have in common with like uh, or mm. people that we have in common with so like men probably will more naturally empathize with other men mm. and so we have to train our empathy so that we can empathize with say women or uh, mm. people in other stations as ourselves like uh, even say writing characters of another race like uh, as mm. A white person, we definitely don't have the ability to uh, naturally empathize with someone who's been in uh, that situation. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as discussed in one of our previous uh, podcasts, reading uh, can help with empathy. So, reading nonfiction, uh, even sometimes fiction, uh, can help you get into the mindset of someone that you've uh, never been able to before. So reading things from uh, people of other cultures, other races, different time periods, uh, the opposite sex, that sort of thing. Mm. It's all going to help you train that empathy so that you can better uh, prepare yourself to write as one of those characters. Yeah. I mean, um, it's all about broadening your horizons and understanding more about the world. And, I mean, as authors, that's pretty much our job you could say yeah. having this kind of empathy writing a whole cast of characters you would never be able to do that without being able to at least imagine yourself into those positions the you know positions of conflict in your story things like that uh, if if you end up with a, an absolute zero sense of empathy i think you will find it very difficult to be a writer in the first place um so I think this is an early step. <laughs> Learn to develop this, and you are well on your way. Um, there are other advantages, of course. I mean, uh, you get to stay relevant, I think, by broadening like this. Uh, authors that can address a wide range of social issues are people whose work tends to endure longer mm -hmm. than others. Yeah, and... The thing is, your audience can typically tell the difference quite easily between something that's genuine and something that's not so much. Um, you can fake large parts of it, but at the core of your work, there will always need to be something authentic. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, it's go you're going to struggle. Yeah, I mean, uh, as you're saying, uh, the different things that... Um, are able the other different authors rather that are able to uh, use that empathy well uh, and get those different standpoints uh, yeah. will become timeless and you know we kind of see today we kind of think of it as being just uh, something from today you know uh, female characters are more in style as it were yeah. but if you even look back like Pride and Prejudice. Uh, from the standpoint of a woman and written by a woman, mm. it's timeless. It's been around for uh, generations. 
Yeah. And the reason why, I'm sure, is because of the fact that uh, it really gets that female experience down. Yeah. And, you know, uh, it definitely wasn't written by a male author, but... <laughs> Uh, if we try to emulate that and try to learn from that, we can bring that authenticity to our own female characters and it's going to uh, give that broader audience appeal yeah. instead of just, you know, male white, uh, <laughs> male white <laughs> readers uh, <laughs> having strong female characters, uh, not just one sided uh, kind of blank emotionless characters it'll make a, it'll make the manuscript a lot stronger and i mean just look at even today as i was saying before it's uh, definitely not something that's new but even today like we look at things like uh hunger games mm-hmm. and uh the hunger games uh of course the main character is a mm-hmm. uh, female and a strong female character and it's one of the biggest um, blockbuster movies and uh, biggest um, novel series out nowadays yeah. and lots of praise from it so really the only way to grow as an author is to challenge yourself and then you know stand up to that challenge and rise to it otherwise you know you're going to stagnate yeah exactly and your audience always... is going to leave you behind <laughs> yeah always keep learning always keep growing and just be real, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Be real. Don't be fake. <laughs> so, audience, uh, what do you think on this? Do you think uh, it's better to write what you know or write what you don't know? Do you think it's better to stick to the experiences and emotions that you're familiar with or to branch out and try something new? Let us know in the comments there what you think. And uh, once again, thank you for joining us here at Second Drafts Podcast. Please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. And let us know what you'd like to see from us in future podcasts. See you next time. Cool. Cheers, guys. Do you want to support production of this YouTube series? Visit www.patreon.com slash and become a patron today.